Across America, banks are working to revitalize communities that have fallen on hard times. I'm Barry Whitus of the Office of the Controller of the Currency. Our agency supervises national banks and federal savings associations, and we recognize the critical role these institutions can play in helping to finance revitalization initiatives. We also administer the Public Welfare Investment Authority that allows banks to make qualified community development investments, such as New Markets tax credits, to finance projects in economically distressed areas. The North Loop of Minneapolis. Home to the Minnesota Twins Ballpark, it's a vibrant part of town where old blends seamlessly with new, and business is thriving. But that hasn't always been the case. By the early 2000s, the factories and warehouses of this historically industrial area had fallen on hard times. With an eye towards revitalization, United Properties, a local real estate development firm, stepped in. To them, the Ford Center, which had opened in 1913 as an assembly plant for Model Ts, was ripe for renovation. The Ford Center was a Class C office building, a very rundown building, and there, the buildings around it weren't much better. But one of our uh, United Properties taglines is we build communities, and we've really viewed this as the start of a, of a community. It's a large building. Ford Center, and uh, we knew we could re-tenant it, um, you know, with some good tenants and hopefully expand from there. With no track record in historic renovation, turning old into new was a risky but exciting undertaking. We saw it as an opportunity to work with not only the city but the state and federal historic agencies to do a, a full-blown historic renovation, which is what we did. We, we would not have been able to redevelop this without some fairly uh, significant tax incentives. We got historic tax credits and we got new market tax credits, uh, and those were the things, but for those, we would not have been able to redevelop this b building, Ford Center, and, and really kick off the redevelopment of commercial in this area. The New Markets tax credits for the project came from Community Development Corporations, or CDCs. One was the Midwest Minnesota Community Development Corporation. In the New Markets tax credit structure, it's a win-win-win. The borrower gets very uh, affordably priced financing with a uh, partial debt forgiveness kicker on the back end. The banks participating as leverage lending or other parties get uh, some interest income over many years and then their full principal repayment. And then the investor, the tax credit investor, gets a rate of return through the tax credits. U.S. Bank was our tax credit investor and uh, MMCDC provided new markets allocation along with two other uh, CDEs, community development entities. And we brought to this project about 23 million of new markets tax credit allocation. So that provided roughly $20 million of financing to a 54 some million dollar project. Healthy communities uh, caused by some of the investments that we make creates additional opportunities for the bank, um, raising, raising the levels of income of the households in the community, creating jobs, help, helping fund businesses, all create additional opportunities for the bank and create a better uh, working environment for our employees uh, in the communities that we're in. That includes communities like Baltimore, where U.S. Bank has been involved in multiple revitalization projects. A prime example is the East Baltimore Development Initiative, Known as EBDI, the plan for 88 acres just north of Johns Hopkins Hospital includes new mixed income housing units, a hotel, diverse retail. A top priority for all stakeholders is to boost the quality of life for local residents. EBDI, the nonprofit, was formed to lead this initiative. Um, it became the vehicle that led the various stakeholders and the roles that they played with the development. The EBDI project has also created a five-acre community park and constructed three life sciences buildings. 
One of them, known as 1812 Ashland, houses a Starbucks where Baltimore baristas are trained, a fast-forward business incubator, and a venture technology firm. Total investment is planned to be $1.8 billion, which is comprised of $400 million of foundation, tax credits, and public funding, and $1.4 billion of private investments. U.S. Bank um, was a supporter from, of the project from early on in the project life cycle, and was also uh, an investor in this most recent project, 1812 Ashland. Um, EBDI worked with other investors, including Bank of America and PNC, also a, a key supporter, um, CDE for the project, Harbor Bank, participated in almost every allocation project investment in the project area. I became what is now uh, the organizing uh, chairman of EBDI. My activities in East Baltimore started in 2002. Many of the larger financial institutions that are participating in the community today have come as a result of harbors reaching out um, to utilize them as part of the investors through their tax credits. We brought in NCIF, the National Community Investment Fund, because of the working relationship we've developed, a Chicago-based organization. By 2017, EBDI had resulted in 5,000 construction jobs and added 1,000 permanent jobs to the neighborhood. But EBDI is only one project where new markets tax credits have helped a Baltimore neighborhood. A short distance away is Dayspring, a nonprofit agency that provides housing and support services to families who are homeless and in recovery from substance abuse. Prior to 2008, Dayspring rented space close to an abandoned school. New Markets tax credits allowed the agency to purchase the new building and renovate it. We came upon this project at a very opportune time where the city supported the development of what we intended to do in the community as well as develop this uh, building that had been vacant for such a long period of time. With new markets tax credits from U.S. Bank, historic tax credits, and financial commitments from private foundations, the renovated building and new wing have allowed the agency to expand its services. Today, its Head Start program serves almost 600 children. This new facility has enabled Dayspring to expand the units of housing that we provide for Dayspring families, as well as enhance the supportive services that we provide for the families. I think we're doing a pretty good job at, at making our little bit of difference in this area. There are many ways your bank can make public welfare investments to support local development. Please visit OCC's website to learn about the guidelines for the Public Welfare Investment Authority as well as other economic development investment opportunities.